NFL coaching news. We always like discussing the coaching hires. We got a lot more offensive coordinator, defensive coordinators. Uh, we got a, a few more head coaches from last week. That's right. We do want to go over uh, all of this, so let's let's jump into it. The show, by the way, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books down there. You can check them all out. Get more information at tunicatravel.com. This Sunday, January 20th, we will be at Hollywood Casino for a live broadcast previewing the Chiefs, Patriots, and the Rams and Saints. So we're going to give you all the information you need to make your bets. We are setting up on the stage bar, which is right next to the biggest projector in the entire Tunica area in all the casinos, 12 foot by 24 foot. I'm telling you, this place is awesome. Perfect setup to watch games. They got food and drink specials all day. $12 buckets of beer. That's six beers for 12 bucks, man. Two bucks of beer. They got chicken wings that are like 50 cents a pop. They got uh, pizzas and and fries and nachos and hot dogs and anything you want to eat, and they got it dirt cheap, and it's awesome. I've been down there multiple times, sat and watched games, sat and watched fights. It's awesome. Hollywood Casino, the place to be Sunday, January 20th. We are going live at 1230. We will be there at 11. We want to shake your hand, come out, say hello. We want to tell you thank you for supporting the show. Let's jump into this thing. What's the first hire you want to jump on? The Browns? Yeah, let's get to Freddie Kitchens. Let's jump into Freddie Kitchens. You want to talk about the D.C. and O.C. first? No, no, I want to talk about Freddie. I want to talk about Freddie. Very. Well, this is near and dear to your heart, so I'm going to let you take the well, reins on it. So, there was one guy I wanted this hiring season, and I didn't get him. That Bruce, was, Bruce Arians. That was Bruce Arians. And the, and the Bucks got him. Yeah, and, and, and I wanted the combination of Arians and Bowles. And that's that's who I wanted. And I kind of, after I knew that wasn't going to happen, I just was very disappointed with all the rest. I didn't like the interview list at all. Every day I looked at who they interviewed next, and I was just like, this is what we're doing? Like, I was so <laughs> disappointed. But then they make the Freddie hire, and I'm thinking, well, out of everybody they interviewed, I'm I'm I, I'm good with giving a shot to somebody I wasn't expecting because I I just wasn't a fan of the other guys. Now his resume is 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 thin. Yeah. When I listened to his press conference, he is not polished as a speaker at all. Looks just incredibly uncomfortable in a suit. They should have just let him wear his hoodie. Um, I like that. I don't know anything other than he was very honest. He was a very straight shooter. He did not give you coach speak at all. He's not afraid to answer a question in a very honest and real way. And um, and and I, if he didn't know the answer, he had no problem saying, I don't, I don't know how we're going to handle that. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like he didn't just make something up. It wasn't typical Hugh Jackson. I, I do think his press conference was a complete – F you to Hugh Jackson. Because the first thing he said was, is there's no I, there is no, I'm sitting in my chair and you're sitting in your chair. And and there was no, oh, I got to look at game film before I answer that question. No, he just tell you the answer. He just told you what he thought. Yeah. And it was all about, we're going to figure this out as a team. I'm not going to have all the right answers. I'm going to lean on my other coaches. I'm going to lean on the organization, the front office for help with everything and everything we do will be a collective collaborative effort. And I really like that being the Pats fan that I am watching other organ. We always say this forever and ever and ever organizations win championships. Yes. Not individuals. And he was very much bought into the organization of the Cleveland Browns winning this thing. I I trust in John Dorsey. I think John Dorsey is probably the best overall football man, general manager in all of the NFL. Whew. I I really do. Yeah, what he built, right, what he built in Kansas City is pretty amazing. And he left Kansas City strictly because there was nothing to build. Now you gotta hold your nose a little bit because he's gonna take football guys. He only cares about football. So if you beat somebody about the face every now and again, you're just gonna have to swallow that pill and say, yeah. man, all right, that's just he going to be wearing brown and, and orange for a while. But you know, that's John Dorsey. 
Yeah. He, he don't miss. I, I questioned a lot of his draft picks. All of them hit. I was wrong. He hit all of them. He had a lot of draft picks last year. He hit them all. I, I There's not a lot that I question about what he does. Get to the OCDC hires. Steve really, Wilkes. Really like yep. Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes was a stud in Carolina. Yeah, he's and when defensive he, coordinator, former head coach of the Arizona yep. Cardinals. And he got one year at Arizona, taking over a terrible team, had a bad offensive coordinator hire, and and you're one and done on a bad team. He's doing exactly what he was born to do, which is coach defense. And I'm going to tell you this. When he was at Carolina, his defenses were lights out. They were tough as nails, and, and I'm very excited about him. Pretty excited about Munkin coming over from Tampa Bay as the OC. Now, I like that Freddie's going to continue to call plays. Yes. I want a head coach that calls plays because – I don't have to worry about another team just coming and hiring my OC as their head coach next year. If he's not the play caller, it usually doesn't happen. Um, but if you look at the offenses and what, I mean, Fitz magic for a couple of weeks was crazy. Well, and even it, so the reason that the bucks lost this year was not the offense. No, it, and not until Jameis got back. And then I think even, there's only then, so much you can do with Jameis. But but even then, they were still putting up points. Some games, yeah. So it it was there were some games. Oh, but yes, you're right. But defense during was NFL just, season, just pure total garbage. Yeah, the defense was awful, and the defense cost them a ton of games. And, and I think he was ultimately fired because or let go because. Um, well, the whole staff was. Yeah, but. There was talks that he was going to get the head coaching job. They were just going to get rid of Cutter and move him up. Ooh. But I think I think he kind of earned it. I mean, he didn't. He wasn't the reason they were bad. No. But I also think they saw Jameis didn't improve under him. Yeah. And well, you know the, what? The thing was, Dirk Cutter was the offensive coordinator. I think there's only so many times well, Cutter, that you can continue to to hire the OC, right? Well, yeah, that's right. They just put the for Cutter. Uh, Shiano was the the head coach, right? And then Cutter got hired to to. Well, at one point Step in time, in. to fix the plays, like Cutter took over play calling. I'm thinking play calling wasn't your problem. Well, no, Cutter, Cutter was your the problem. play caller when he was the OC. Yeah, I'm talking about this year. No, I, I'm with you. To start the season, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Munkin was you. calling play it, at, in the middle of the season when they were still bad and the record was terrible. Cutter was like, "I'm taking over play calling," and I thought, "Man, I, I think, I think some." 38 year old dude from Harvard's averaging 40 points a game for you. Yeah, it, yeah I don't think it play, play calling. Problem. Problem. It ain't um, the offense. That's right. It, I'm happy with that. I, I like that Freddie's still working the play calling. Um, and I like that they're going to run this as an organization. I, once again, I'm just going to trust John Dorsey. I, I, like I think it. he knows far more about this stuff than I do. Freddie Kitchens has been around the world. He's got the he's got the freakiest resume out of any NFL coach standing right now. Yeah, it's and, and that's not like freakish good. Like this guy, based on merit, based on resume, did not deserve this job compared to everybody else that interviewed for it. I'm I'm very glad that he's the guy over everybody else that interviewed for it. He's he's a football guy. I like football guys, and I like him as a man. The way he took accountability when they asked him hard questions, the way he doesn't just give you coach speak, he doesn't do the Belichick thing where he just gets up there and mumbles and gives you nothing. He's going to answer your questions very honestly, and if you said something or asked him about something inappropriate, he has no problem telling you, just putting you in your place. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. I, I, yeah. I'm very excited for for what Cleveland football has to come in the next couple of years. Let's talk about something else I know you're excited about. Uh, Vic Fangio. Man. The Denver Broncos got a good one. Bears, D.C. Uh, they hired offensive line coach Mike Munchak, who was second for the job, I think. Right? Yeah, and he was the other – yeah, he was the – their O.C., is a uh, quarterback's coach from uh, 49ers. 49ers, Rick Scangarello. And Munchak was – so those were their two option B and option C if they don't get Fangio. Yep. And there were a lot of talks that Fangio wasn't going to take a job. That, that, that dude's a 60-year-old guy that's been a D.C. his whole life. And there's a lot of people that think, hey, man, I'm good at this, and I'm very happy doing it, and I'm paid pretty well. 
and things are rolling so well in, in, in Chicago with, with this new defense we got, why would I leave and take a head coaching job? He took it. And then he brought the, oh, the DB coach with this, him to be their uh, defense you, coordinator. You know how much Ed I Donatel. love this Bears defense. And now I have no idea what they're going to look like because two dudes that were just stud coaches just left. Yeah. That's going to be hard to replace in Chicago, man. That, yeah, you're, you're right. I would not be worried about Parky right now. I would definitely be worried about trying to fill those shoes. Yeah, because the defense won them games this year. Oh, totally. Just, just bottom line. And I think Fangio is an elite level coach. I really think he's good. I don't know that he's going to be a great head coach. I've talked about this in the past. In the NFL, all sports do this. All the corporate world does this. There is a philosophy that people get promoted to a point of failure. The reason you get a promotion and then another promotion and then another promotion, and then all of a sudden the promotions stop is usually because you got pushed up to a point that you're not good at that job anymore. Because the job that you have now is not the job you did last time. They're totally different. I think that happens in the NFL more than any other sport where you can be an unbelievable offensive-minded coach or an unbelievable defensive-minded coach. But when you have to sit in the head chair and make all decisions, you're not good at that job. I don't want to see that with Fangio because it – I, I like him, and I I like that defensive guys are still getting jobs. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, let's talk about the Dolphins coach. I do think the Bears are going to be nasty. Uh, the, the Broncos are going to be nasty defensively. Oh, I, I agree with that. Um, the Dolphins, Brian Flores. Okay. I, this, Linebacker coach from the Patriots. I was a little surprised. Very green. Very green. Yeah. Um, I, I guess he's – been the defensive coordinator, but not really. Um, not in title, but he did kind of everything else for the defense except for call the plays. Um, and he might be calling plays. I don't know if him or Bill is doing that. Uh, I just know Bill. I mean, he's he's just a linebacker's coach, though. No. I mean, yes, in title, that's what his title is. He's done the job of defensive coordinator all year. Uh, Matt Patricia did that for like three years. They went without a defensive coordinator. And then finally, Patricia got the defensive coordinator title. Bill okay. Bill is big on you got to earn the title, but we're going to give you the job. You're going to do all the work. You're just not going to get the pay or the title that goes with it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 Bill. Uh, here's so this is the NFL got crushed this year with the minorities. All all the the coaches that got fired, so many of them were all the, the black coaches, the minority coaches. And then he's the only one that got a job. And the problem is, is I don't know that that's a good job. I don't know that that's a job that he can keep because I think these guys keep getting jobs before they're ready. I think Steve Wilkes is going to be a good coach. I don't think he was ready to be a head coach. No, I agree with you. And, and um, I've heard a couple of other people talk about this and, uh, and I don't, I don't remember who I wish I could credit them. But there needs to be some type of like system in place to where if you we need more minority coaches in the NFL. It, you know, so much of the league is made up of minorities and players. You have to have some comparable minority representation in coaching, um, in leadership positions. I think that's important. Front office as well. I think to get there, you, you can't just have a guy be a first year defensive face of a, of a program and oh he did good let's give him a job because then if he fails at that job he you didn't help him and you didn't help the the the, the rest of them trying to make a difference you've got to groom them you've got to teach them the job you've got to let them give them all the tools there is because I'm sure just coaching next to Belichick doesn't mean you've learned everything. I don't know no. that Bill shares all the things that he has inside his head with his coaches. Because when they leave right. there, they don't they don't tend to do well. No, no, it, it, none of his coaches. In, like Bill O'Brien is is the best coach. I don't know that he's great. I don't know that he's good. And that's the thing. Like we we've know. talked about Bill O'Brien all year. We we thought sorry about that. Uh, when he started zero and three, we thought he'd be the first coach fired. I thought he's going to be fired. I thought I thought either he him or Hugh were going to get canned. That, yeah. That's who. That was the list. And then he goes on a what? He wins nine nine in straight. A row. No, he lost, he won nine straight. It was just crazy. And but like three of those games, the other team just the the first three, the other team was like, "Here, I need you to get a win so you don't get fired and you stick around for the next decade." 
Yeah. Give him an extension. And then it keeps going. And then it just kept going. Um, I, I, so I don't, I don't really know how to, how to handle it. I, I don't know what Miami's doing. That's my biggest no problem. Idea. I don't, and they're talking about Tannehill's thinking about. I think he's a free agent, and he's talking about leaving. I don't know who's going to be the quarterback there. Kyler there, Murray. There have been reports. Okay. <laughs> there have been reports that they're in like tank for Tua mode, but that didn't really happen in the NFL. And if it does, and you tank for Tua, and if you do, t- I don't know that that's a bad plan, by the way. Um, but if you do tank, this is a place where you gotta wear that resume. And so if you go 15 and one or 16, oh, and 16 or one and 15, sorry, yeah. the other way, like, and then the next year you get the guy you were hoping to get. And let's say you go, you know, five and 11, five. Yeah. I was just, I was trying to come up with a, a not a terrible record, but not like a great record. I think, I think there's a lot of places that were like, we knew we tanked last year, but we tanked last year. And then you started losing record this year. We're going to fire you. Yeah, like I think you can lose your job. I don't know that if I'm the if coach, you, I would buy create, into that. If you create a losing culture, I guess it, it is tough to get out of that. Really, really hard to get out of that. And this is not college where you no. you flip over players. No, right? You can't go get a bunch of graduate transfers or JUCOs and and just be studly. The no, next you year. you got guys under contract. Yeah, and and they are going to be your team. And that is I, that's I, is I what just, it is. I don't know what's going on there, and I hate that he ended up there. The Bengals hired Zach Taylor. I don't know what in the hell is going on in in. Well, you know exactly Cincinnati. what's going on. It's the same thing that's going on everywhere else across the league. Anybody that has ever graced the presence of Sean McVay is getting a job right now. And, and Zach Taylor, the quarterback's coach of the Rams, is now the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. So, I heard... I mean, I, I just I, this kid is young, and he might be fantastic. So I so I followed so I followed Jason Lockham for. I listened to him a lot, and I heard him say today in an interview that anybody any owner that has sat and talked with Sean McVay knows how much of a unicorn Sean McVay is. If he is so much a unicorn, that doesn't mean that everybody who has pepped the unicorn or fed the unicorn, is going to be a unicorn. Why do you think that they got anything out of him like he has? I think this is the most foolish trend I've ever seen, and I do think that we are about to get into a world of haves and have-nots for the next two to three years. All right, here's, here's his coaching resume. Texas A&M grad assistant from 08 to 2011. Dolphins assistant quarterbacks coach in 2012. Dolphins quarterbacks coach 2013 to 2015. Was Gates with the Dolphins those times, I wonder? I know for obviously 2015, 2014, but I wonder. I have no idea. I wonder if he was there for 2012. 2015, he was the offensive coordinator Okay, there. Here is the, the connection. He was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for the Bengals in 2016. Okay, so and they then, know who he is. And then the Rams in 2017, he was the assistant wide receivers coach. And then in 2018, he was, he was the quarterbacks coach. Okay, and so he so he's uh, got history with the Bengals. He played quarterback at Nebraska, and he was uh, under no, and he, under Bill Callahan. And if he coached under Gase, because I actually do respect Gase as a head coach and an offensive mind. I think he's a sharp guy. Well, I think he used to be. I don't know what the hell happened the other day, but he was he was there. Well, no, he wasn't there for Gase. We 20, had to be there for his 2015. 20, but Gase was there 2016, 2017, 2018. Gase wasn't there in 2015? No, Gase was only there three years. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I was about to who was up. there before him? Joe Philman? I don't know. I don't remember who it was in 2015. But no, I don't think... Gase was only there three years. Hmm. So, I mean, that's that's interesting. I don't know off the top of my head. Um... You, and I'm I'm looking it up right no, now. As a matter of fact, um, yeah, I I don't know, I don't know who it was, um, but yeah, I I thought like I didn't know what the connection was, mm-hmm. but that's the connection. Well, I knew he had a connection to Sean McVay. I mean, I knew that's what's going on. Joe but- Philbin was the head coach. 
uh, until October fifth. They went one and three to oh, start. Then Dan Campbell and Dan then Campbell. and then Gase came in. So the whole time he was there, he was under Philbin, under well, all those positions. Philbin and, and Campbell and Campbell for half the season. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Joe Philbin's not a good coach to learn under. So I don't know. I mean, he he's they he's might associated. Be, they with, might they might be tanking for two or two. They might be. <laughs> hey, you might be right. I I don't know. I don't know. I can't make sense of it. That's a that's a bad organization. Yeah, uh, let's let's wrap Cle- up with Cleveland's uh, getting better. Yeah, and Cincinnati's taking their place. Let's wrap up with the uh, the OCs and DCs. Uh, the Jags hired John DeFilippo, uh, great offense coordinator, not necessarily a good play caller. So it works out well. So I mean, is is Marone going to call the play? Oh yeah, Marone calls the plays all the time anyway. Okay. Marone's called the play this year. I mean, he's a play caller. He's an OC. He's an offensive guy. So yeah, that I actually think that's a pretty good hire. Uh, Vikings hired. This is uh, the best hire, Gary Kubiak. This is the best hire, um, in my opinion. Actually, no, hire. he didn't go to the Vikings, did he? I thought I, the Vikings kept. No, he no, he's not an OC. Kubiak isn't. Yeah, he is. He's no, no, no because his son got a, a job with him, but Kubiak is like a, an off-field assistant. I thought his son was because the, like the quarterbacks coach, and no, the guy that uh, that took over the job. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the new offensive is advisory role. Yeah, man. Okay, I thought he was going to be the OC. No, he's so who's uh, the guy for the OC. The OC is that. Uh, what was the guy that uh, the guy that took over this year? Yeah. Um, and I can't remember. Is it Kevin something? I'm googling it now. We should have known all this stuff. Yeah, you would think so. Really bad. Uh, Kevin on. Stefanski. That's who. It okay. Is. And so, but Kubiak's son got hired on the staff as well. Yes, and that's, I, knew, that's I knew that, which is why over. I thought Kubiak was going to take the OC job. Um, I don't think Kubiak wants an OC job. I don't think he, I don't think he cares that much about. Like he's interested in like game planning and, and all that, but I don't think he cares anything about. He don't want to be there on Sundays. No, he don't want to work Sundays. I get that. Uh, I don't like working Sundays either. Cardinals. They hired Vance Joseph as their defensive coordinator, and I think that's a pretty probably, good hire. Probably good hire. Vance Joseph, very good coordinator. Probably not a good head coach. Cliff Kingsbury cannot find an offensive coordinator. He's offered it to a couple of people, and they've all turned him down. So Sarkeesian said no. Filippo said no. Jake Spavital said no. Spavital, West Virginia offensive coordinator, that is now the head coach at Texas State. That's right. He took the um, head coaching job. Ben McAdoo and Jim Bob Cooter are the next two names that they have on their list. I think either one of those will be fine. I think either one's fine. He he's going to call his own plays. Yeah, I, I think I think getting had he gotten DeFilippo, that's what he needs. He needs a a professional NFL offensive coordinator. DeFilippo was a was seen in the league as a very good offensive mind. Yeah, he just was a bad play caller everywhere he ever went, and and I think. Going to a place like like Arizona, where Kingsbury's going to run his offense, he just needed a guy like Felipe. But it, like I said, it works out well with him in Jacksonville because that's the same setup. Jim Bob Cooter, I think, would be great for him. I, ben McAdoo, like that, might help you as far as the former head coaching aspect. But McAdoo was so terrible with the Giants that I don't know. Yeah, he ran a lot of people raw too. Yeah, Cooter, Jim Bob Cooter, I don't think did that. I don't think he. He burned a lot of bridges. No, no, no. He's, I think he was fine. Um, that's all I've got on my list. You got anybody else? No, I mean, that's the that's the bulk of it. But, and I know we're going a little long. Can we figure out, has anybody talked? Now, I have been, we record this on Wednesdays. I have been away from a lot of sports media news after Monday morning, Monday afternoon. What in the hell was going on with, with uh, Adam Gase? Does anybody know? I have no idea. You and I talked a little so, bit about. So this. I have. I and, and I'm not. This is not like a conspiracy thing. This is this is just human nature. I've watched him do press conferences a hundred times. Yeah. And and he so he doesn't look like that. He's he's never done that before ever. I've got a big track record of of him, and he's never looked like this before ever. Yeah. So he either did it on purpose. Maybe just somebody dared him to be goofy. I, I don't know what. He wanted to like take a shot at the New York media, so I'm going to go out there and act crazy and do like something strange. Or 
or he was on something. And I know everybody in the world like made the Coke joke because like it was his coach that got caught doing cocaine off of hookers and, and like filmed it. So, so like I get that that's an easy joke, but I need some type of explanation. If it's not going to be, he was on some type of medication or drug or he was drunk. Or he did or, it on purpose. Or he did it on purpose. But see, people take... who are drunk are not walking around eyes wide open. No. It, now, that is, I've, I've been around many different types of drunks. I've been many different types of drunk. I've never seen gays look like this. No, but no. So it either had to be on purpose or it had to be chemically induced. Yeah. Th- th- this is not, it was just a coincidence. This is not, this was an accident. It's just not that. No. Now you're right, and I'm I'm sure we'll hear something about it. I just want to know I and and if it's happened, I need to go find it. I want to hear somebody in the New York media ask him, what the hell was that? And I need I don't need coach speak. I need him to give a real answer. It, if if you have heard a response to this, leave it in the comments. Let us know what's up. Um because when you Google it, all you get is like a million images of it and people laughing or making a joke or having a comment. But I can't find. But there's no the reason. Show, I it. looked it up. I can't find an interview where he's actually like said, you know, yeah, I took something or whatever. I've got a, I had, you know, the flu and I drank a bunch of Nyquil. I, I don't know. I don't know what could make you do that. I have no idea. But I know it had to be something. It had to be something, right? Or he did it on purpose just to be goofy and funny, which is just to mess with the New York media, and that's entirely possible too, I guess. I, I don't know, man. If, I, if I'm your GM, if I'm your owner, I'm pissed off. Yeah, because that it, it makes you immediately look like a moron. Oh yeah, because it's like we hired this guy. Yes, I I can't figure it out. That's the only coaching kerfungle that I that threw me for a loop this week. Yeah. No, you're you're right. That uh that wraps up our NFL coaching hire talk, I guess. Sure. I don't know what to call it, but but that's what we're talking about that's, on this one. That's what we did. Um Tunica, Mississippi is the presenting sponsor of the show. Tunicatravel.com is the place to go to find information on all six of their sports books. We are gonna be at Hollywood Casino this Sunday, January twentieth. We'll get there about eleven o'clock. We're gonna shake hands, kiss babies, all the wonderful things. Come and hang out with us. The show starts at 12.30. We're going to preview both games. We're going to give you all the information on what picks you need to make. We are set up on the stage bar right next to the sports book, right next to the biggest projector screen in Tunica at any of the casinos. It's 12 foot by 24 foot. Perfect place to come watch the games. Food and drink specials all day, and the food's actually good. I've had it. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. $12 buckets of beer, $2 a beer, not bad. Come hang out with us. We want to see you. We will catch you guys on Sunday.